Hello from BI Consulting Services. Guys, I'm super excited to be here with you today. I'm going to take you through the Microsoft Copilot infrastructure, specifically inside of Power BI. I'm in the desktop version of Power BI today, and I just thought it would be helpful to kind of give you a little bit of a preview into what I've been playing around with, as well as what I've done as far as setting this infrastructure up in our environment. Um, I won't go into too much detail on the Azure setup and kind of what I did, um, but I will touch on pricing and specifically the version of Copilot that I've got turned on right now running this demo. So for folks who may not be super familiar, Microsoft Copilot has been out for a little while now, I think, and it's really just an AI-powered assistance tool, in short, that Microsoft's integrated across really its entire suite. Uh, but today I'm going to spend my time talking about it from a Power BI perspective. So here on screen, I've actually went in and used some sample data. And I'm going to take you through this live and created three pages inside of a Power BI report all through Copilot. And I've got to be honest, this is pretty cool. Um, I didn't dig into the data. I didn't test this out on what I'd like to call more dirty data. Um, which we see consistently in this space, but this is on a clean sample model that they've actually got out there that you can use. And I'm gonna just walk us through the steps for, for setting this up. So let's just kind of jump in. So I went ahead and created just a blank report, right? Nothing here, just open up Power BI Desktop as a blank report. And I'm gonna select the use sample data. We're gonna load in the sample financial data that we're all probably super familiar with if we've used Power BI a lot in the past. I'm going to just load that data into this model. And there are some settings that you have to turn on to get Copilot to work. You see it's here in my top uh, right hand corner, really the very last icon to display on the home screen. Um, so there are some settings that you have to turn on from an administrative standpoint to get this to function for you and your team. But here it is. Here's sort of the Copilot icon. I've loaded my data into uh, this report. And so this is going to be pretty short and sweet, but we're going to suggest, we're going to let it suggest for us what sort of content do you recommend based on what you're seeing inside this data model that might be useful or helpful uh, to a, a user of this report. And there's a few things here. So they've suggested a few reports, actually. There's the sales performance one, profitability assessment, discount impact study, and a sales trend overtime report. It does take a bit of time to get each of these individual pages loaded once it does go through and starts to kind of build out the individual pages. So we'll give it a minute to do its thing, but we're actually gonna just click it for every single one of these. So we can see how Copilot kind of develops pages for us. So the first one is the sales performance analysis. I've already gotten it pulled up here uh, on this page. And so you can kind of see uh, just this page in the report. There's some filters across the top that are dynamically working the way they should inside of Power BI, and then a segment filter across the top as well, all of which sort of interact the way that they're supposed to as well. We've got sales by country, sales by product, sales by segment, and then just sales over time in this re report. All right, so now we've got the new page integrated here, uh, and it looks somewhat similar to the other report. Right now it is just segmented by year and not by um, you know, individual dates. So you got kind of the date view here and then you've got a buy year view here. So they did add in an additional visual, it looks like, uh, but not too bad at all. We can kind of go in and let's do the profitability assessment next. So we'll let it work on its thing there. And it's just zooming through sort of the final integrations here. Let's do the discount impact. And then we'll kind of finalize things with the sales performance analysis. And then we'll start asking it a few questions or ask it to build a report um and we'll kind of make up some terminology that we can use for that we'll kind of come up with something and then we'll say hey build this for us and let's see what it comes out with there too so it will take a second to get through these let's go ahead and throttle through let's see what the next report was the page that i put here so the product profitability analysis um, is already displayed um, and you can also see the sales performance analysis here is a page that i created just asking it questions um, so we will go back to asking it a question and say, hey, build a report for me based on these things. Um, and so we'll see how well that goes also. It does take a little bit of time to build all the individual reports. So this will take just a second and then we'll kind of move through. All right, so we got the discount impact 
here. Um, so you can kind of see some trends here by date ranges, um, kind of taking, let's see what the actual underlying data is feeding. Yep, so we've got sales price, some sales based data kind of integrated in here as well as brand discount by date. So just sort of trending this data, low, medium, high, none um, from a discount branding standpoint, and then giving us sort of the trends over time thus far here. All right, so now let's ask it a question directly. All right, can you create a, let's just do a metric or a report that focuses on year over, year sales businesses. All right, so we kind of got this jotted down and if I could spell. All right. Perfect. So can you create a report that focuses on year over year sales differences and analyzes those differences by segment, product, and discount brand? Can we also have a filter by segment, product, and discount brand with a brand with a focus on year over year trends? So we'll send that through and we'll let it work its magic. Let's see what we come up with from a content standpoint or an end deliverable standpoint for this report page. And then we will kind of stop there and I'm going to pivot us to the actual uh, Pricing that I've been able to kind of locate for Copilot. I think there are a few different options, but I'll be candid. Uh, I, I, I'm by far not the expert in that space. So I may come back with a more detailed video on what costs could look like, but I do want to tell you what I set up to get this infrastructure to work in our environment. Um, just so you guys have context for what, what I did. I did actually set that stuff up. All right, cool. So here we are looking at all right, we've got sales for 2013 versus 2014. We've got sales by segment, sales by discount brand, sales by month, and then sales by product. And we've got a segment filter here and a year filter. All right, so not too bad. I'd probably want to integrate a few more distinctions here, like maybe the sales discounts by uh, or the sales by discount brand, I'd probably like to put a year here, right? Just so I can um, sort of delineate the periods uh, just a little bit better. So for example, something like that, where you can see it year over year and kind of compare those a little bit more seamlessly. Uh, same here, something exactly like that too, right? Comparing it year over year. So I can actually see those numbers. And since this is by month, very similar logic, right? You want to be able to see the comparison year over year, which this allows for you to do a little bit cleaner. Uh, so uh, needless to say, I think overall, not too bad. Probably a few things that will continue to do a little bit better as it kind of refines itself over time. But I bet if you continue to iterate, it'll probably get you exactly what you need um, for very clean data. We may bring one where we try and do this with dirty data. Uh, see how that goes. So now just a few things, uh, just some general details, and we will put this in the description of this YouTube video. You can go through here and see how to access Copilot as well as what the requirements are. Uh, so for me, this is actually where I came to get my settings enabled and to turn on Copilot. There were a handful of steps to do that, and I actually followed those. Uh, so I'm actually on an F64 uh, uh, from like a storage and capacity standpoint, that's what I've selected in our Azure tenant to turn on Copilot. As for pricing for the Copilot infrastructure that we've kind of been reviewing today, I just wanted to give you a quick debrief on that. So I'm sitting out here on azure.microsoft.com under their fabric pricing, just so you can get a quick preview into that, as well as just if you're interested and you wanna do a little bit of perusing, this will give you a lot of content on how to enable Fabric as well as some details about Fabric and Copilot. Um, I think both of these are probably good places for you to kind of do some perusing uh, and kind of learn a little bit more about Copilot and Microsoft Fabric and how you turn this stuff on inside of your environment specifically. But if we go out to this 
site, you will see immediately, you actually have to set it up using F64. That's the one that I selected as a part of my integration. And you can see the cost here. And then you can kind of see the price on a monthly basis for pay as you go. So this is kind of the estimated cost for turning on F6, uh, F64 uh, inside of your tenant and using the Copilot infrastructure. So just a quick recap of what we've kind of done today. We went in and we've developed several report pages uh, specifically here using Copilot inside of Power BI desktop and using the sample financial data that Microsoft provides. So we've got a sales performance dashboard that looks pretty good, product profitability report, a discount impact analysis, and then a year over year sales analysis that was developed. And you can see I made a few modifications to that one to make it kind of solve and answer the questions I was specifically looking for it to answer for me. Uh, but hopefully you found this content useful. If you have any questions, need any support as your team begins to use some of this infrastructure, give us a shout again. BI Consulting Services. You can find us on our website at powerbiconsultingservices.com. I know it's long. Uh, appreciate you guys listening, uh, to listening and watching the content today. If you liked it, drop a note in the comment section, like the video. And again, we appreciate you guys subscribing. Shout out to our follower, our subscribers on YouTube. We've got a little over 60,000 subscribers watching our content. We find that to be super awesome. So thank you and more content to come. Have a good one.